to the um, Wednesday, October 15th, regular town council meeting. Can we have the roll call, please? Chairman Lynch. Present. Councilor Backer. Here. Councilor Dill. Here. Councilor Lennon. Here. Councilor McKinney. Here. Councilor Rowe. Here. Councilor Swift Kayata. And I would just note that Councilor Swift Kayata is at a long standing family commitment. Otherwise, she would be here. Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. The first item on our agenda um, is consideration of the minutes of the September 8th meeting. I move that we accept the minutes of the September 8th meeting. Second. Is there discussion? Seeing none, uh, all in, I'm sorry. I, I just had one question on item 120-2008. Uh, um, to refer the smoking provisions uh, proposal to the Fort Williams Park. Uh, was that a unanimous vote? I thought it was. Oh, was it? I, I thought you may have voted against it. That's yeah, no. Okay. Okay. I thought it was unanimous Thanks. reference. It, I, I wrote these minutes without voluminous notes, so I could have been wrong if no. someone else has a different recollection. No. Madam That's Chair, yes. if I may make uh, one suggested change to the minutes. Um, in item 123-2008, the energy use update, um, and it appears that our town manager was the author of these, and that there's a reference to um, $54,000 in areas where the budget can be shaved. Um, I prefer the term adjusted <laughs> <laughs> rather than shaved. Yeah. Is that, that acceptable to the rest of the council? Yes. We usually use the word adjustments for an increase in taxes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, any further comments? Seeing none, all in favor? Okay, you can show that to be unanimous. And next item on our agenda is reports and correspondence. Cynthia? Yes, thank you. Um, with winter just around the corner, um, we, we're all becoming increasingly anxious about um, heating costs this winter. And I just wanted to point out that the state of Maine is working diligently to anticipate and hopefully meet Maine's energy needs. Um, the state has bolstered its energy and assistance program and is undertaking a large public education effort to let every Mainer know how to prepare for winter and to assist those who are struggling. From energy saving tips to weatherization kits to home heating assistance, there are multiple resources at hand to make sure your home is safe and warm this winter. One important resource all Maine residents should be aware of is the toll-free number 211. This toll-free number is the connection point for an extensive statewide directory of state agencies, support groups, nonprofits, and private organizations that provide various community services, including energy assistance. The 211 operators are experts at connecting people with the help they need whether it be an energy audit, weatherization, alternative energy options, or home heating assistance. I've brought brochures about other valuable energy programs, which I will leave here in Town Hall. And please don't hesitate to contact me if you'd like more information. Um, in particular, this brochure, Keep Maine Warm, has a lot of really helpful um, tips on um, getting involved, as well as um, energy tips to save money and to increase the efficiency of your home. So I would encourage all of you to take a look. I'll leave them out at the table at Town Hall. Thank you. Thank you, Cynthia. Other reports? OK, I guess I would like to make a statement. Um, as you know, this is my last council meeting. I've accepted a position in the main judiciary, and the Judicial Code of Ethics prohibits judicial employees from holding office, so it's with some very mixed emotions that I've tendered my resignation from the Council effective October 18th. The past seven and a half years have at all times been interesting, stimulating, and rewarding. And I would be remiss if I did not take a few minutes to thank the people who have made it thus. 
First, I want to thank the people of Cape Elizabeth for allowing me this wonderful privilege to serve for slightly more than two terms. I truly believe that public service is its own reward. I have met so many caring, concerned, compassionate, and passionate people in my tenure. The public has been generous in sharing their thoughts and views with me, especially at budget time. Many of you have also served countless hours on the many town boards and commissions and charitable and civic organizations, and we have worked together on a number of efforts that um, I will cherish those memories. I have, through all of you, come to appreciate the differing views and skills that make our town so vibrant and livable. And it is most humbling to see all that the citizens can accomplish in our civic and charitable-minded town. Second, I would like to thank all of the municipal and school employees. 24-7, you deliver the kind of service that we often take for granted. The pool and the library are open for countless hours every week. Community services provides a wide range of programming. Fort Williams and our open space and our trails are beautifully and thoughtfully maintained. Our roads are plowed and cared for. We have a wonderful place to bring our garbage, and recycling is very convenient. The police, fire, and rescue personnel work hard to keep our town safe and secure. Our children, including mine, receive an excellent education in Cape schools. And there are many other functions less visible than those that I have mentioned. Um, the employees who register your car and your dog, um, the people who clean the schools and the town buildings, all of those people contribute to the seamless delivery of municipal and educational services. And I just want to say that I admire and thank all of you. It has been a privilege to meet many of you and to see firsthand your professionalism and your dedication. Third, I would like to thank my fellow counselors. Your hard work, enthusiasm, good humor, and dedication have been wonderful to see and experience these past seven years. Sometimes, especially as chair, I have felt a little like a herding dog. We have the same general goals for the town, to support excellent schools and to maintain the high quality of municipal services. But we often want to move in different directions to get there. But get there we do, although it is admittedly sometimes not very pretty to watch. But we've gotten there in a nonpartisan and respectful manner, and I encourage you to maintain that nonpartisan and thoughtful and deliberative nature of your work. I have learned much from each of you, and I am grateful for your many kindnesses and encouragement over the years. Lastly, the manager. Michael, I thank you for your judgment, your patience, your fairness, and your wise counsel. With the possible exception <laughs> of the fund balance issue, your guidance was and is invaluable. You are a dedicated public servant, and you have accomplished much for the town. The citizens of Cape Elizabeth are very fortunate to have you, and it has been a singular privilege to work closely with you, especially in my term as chairman and as finance committee chairman. So to all of you, and especially the voters, I thank you for allowing me the privilege to serve. It has been an honor that I am most grateful and thankful for. Marianne, could I invite you to the podium, please? <laughs> sure. That's good. Good luck. I should have sent a pro progress report. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's always uh, a bit unsettling when uh, terms of elected officials are cut short. 
because oftentimes it's for a very sad reason, either relocation or illness or worse. But uh, I can quickly say tonight that the reason that this term has been cut short is a very happy reason. Um, I think, uh, I know I represent uh, my colleagues, our colleagues on the council, but I also represent the citizens of Cape Elizabeth. Uh, when I say how sad we are to lose you, Marianne, from the town council. Uh, but I can also add very quickly uh, that, that the reason you're leaving is, in your own words, a dream position. And uh, I think that's just wonderful. And so this is a bittersweet moment, uh, not only for you, but for us as well. Uh, as she said, Marianne has served our town council uh, for over two terms. She's not only served, but she's served with passion, um, with compassion, and with distinction, having uh, twice been elected chairman of our, of our group. Um, as we've all witnessed time and time again, um, Mary Ann is a, is a leader. Leadership comes easy for you, and uh, we have you uh, to thank for that. I'd like to inject just a couple of personal comments, if I might. Um, having grown up here in Cape Elizabeth, I've had the opportunity to see uh, a number of town councillors, and I'll even date myself by telling you that uh, my earliest recollections are when we had selectmen and a, and a town meeting form of government. And over the course of those, those, uh, year, those many years, um, there have been a few selectmen and councillors that have stood up, that have risen to a level uh, not attained by, by most. And I'm not going to try to name any of them because I know I'll forget some, but uh, in my mind, and I think in the mind of many others, you have risen to that select uh, group, Miriam. Um, Through, through your service as a town councillor, Cape Elizabeth is indeed a better place. And I can think of no higher compliment than to pay somebody uh, on the town council than that. Uh, we'll miss you, as I hope I you'll miss, miss us. You. We wish you the very best in your endeavors and in your work with the judici judiciary. And we thank you for the bottom of our heart for your service and your friendship. Thank you. <laughs> token of the town's appreciation, we'd like to present you with this plaque. Mary Ann Lynch, Town Council Chairman, 2008. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you all. Thank you. Uh, now we still have a meeting that I've got to <laughs> heard you all through. And again, thank you very much. It is certainly an honor to serve with all of you. So the next item on our agenda is it. Are there any more? I'm sorry. Any more reports or correspondence? What would I do without the manager? Seeing none. The town manager's report. Yes, uh, thank you, Marianne. I just want to join Jim and the rest of the council in thanking you for your, your service. Uh, Marianne mentioned a few minutes ago about uh, the, the fund balance and uh, questioning my wisdom on that. The town has something called the undesignated surplus, and one of the issues that Marianne has always looked at is, is the undesignated surplus of the town, and she always refers to it as the money that would overtax the citizens. Uh, in terms of, you know, by having it a surplus, it's money you didn't immediately need. And, you know, that, that view has been something, you know, that I think is indicative of her always looking after the citizens. And her frugality, personally, I noticed, you know, this evening, she was, she was giving, you know, her remarks, and I noticed all of the paper that she's got it prepared on was also printed on the other side. With, with some emails or something. I didn't have my glasses on at the time, but you know, she, she believes in recycling, believes in reusing, and just practices what she preaches. And you know, I think for that reason, she'll be an excellent information officer uh, for, for the state judiciary. I think it, it's also important to note, and going back to the fund balance, is that that you know, has been an issue that Marianne has had quite a concern over. And just what an odd coincidence that the very last meeting that Mary Ann will be attending will be a workshop tomorrow evening. And the first item is, is the review of the annual financial reports with our auditors. She'll have one last chance to ask the auditors 
uh, what's the proper fund balance, and as well as uh, make her case of why the fund balance uh, ought to be at a reasonably low level. So anyway, it, it's been great to uh, serve with her and uh, all of the staff. I know I speak for all of them. Uh, we'll miss you. So thank you. Thank you. I will miss all of you, and uh, I will especially miss our annual fund balance discussions. Hopefully, someone on the council will take up that torch. <laughs> okay. Um, citizens' discussion of items not on the agenda. If there is anyone here who would like to discuss anything that is not on our agenda, now is an opportunity for you to do so. If you would not, if you would prefer to wait, we also will have a similar time at the end of our meeting. And seeing no one here to speak on items not on, on the agenda, we will move to open the public hearing on the increase in the sewer rates. That's item 129. Is there anyone here who would like to speak to the increase in the sewer rates? Seeing no one, I will close the public hearing and we will take up item 129. Michael, would you like to give us a little introduction? I, I'd be happy to. Uh, the sewer rates are proposed to be adjusted uh, as a result of a need to increase what they call the hydraulic capacity of the Southern Cape Elizabeth Treatment Plant. Uh, the Southern Cape Elizabeth Treatment Plant is now a little over 20 years old. Uh, when it was originally licensed, it was licensed for 550,000 gallons per day. Particularly as we've, we've had so many storms in recent years, the main DEP and, and others have been concerned with the bypass that goes on during major storm events and even minor storm events. Uh, the Portland Water District, who owns the plant uh, on our behalf, has been working with the main DEP and uh, you know, has worked out an arrangement whereby the plant would be, the hydraulic capacity of the plant would be increased from 550,000 gallons per day to 2.75 million gallons per day, uh, almost a five-fold increase. Uh, this will greatly reduce the incidence of overflows and ensure, ensure that our shoreline uh, is cleaner. Like anything, uh, environmental improvements is cost to it. In this case, it's $2.7 million. Uh, the district proposing to borrow the funds through a 20-year bond from the state revolving loan fund at an estimated interest rate of 3.5%. Uh, in looking at this, this work will not be going on until 2011, but it would require to do it then a 27% increase in sewer rates to do it all at once with the, uh, the projections the district uh, did along with myself uh, looking at the numbers. Uh, with the proposal uh, that's before the council is to increase the rates by 4% each year, uh, which, which will help a lot more with the adjustment of easing into it as well as through that mechanism reducing the amounts that need to be borrowed in the future by building up a little bit of undesignated surplus uh, in the sewer fund in advance of, of the major investment of the uh, 2.7 million. So it's proposed to approve rate increases of 4% effective January 1, 2009, January 1, 2010, and 2011, and to increase the sewer connection fee effective January 1, 2010 from 3,500 to 4,000. The reason January 1, 2010 was chosen was a lot of budgets for, for different uh, folks may, might have been done already for the connections. And, it's felt to give everyone a lot of advance notice that that is would be going up 500. Okay. Is there a discussion of this item? David? Um, and I note, um, Mike, that there's a, a third item, a subparagraph C, in the proposal as well. I'm not quite sure what the uh, it changes, if any, or whether that's consistent it, with... It's, there's, there's no change. That's just reprinted uh, for, for having the full sewer rate schedule before you. Further discussion? David. Um, I move that we um, adopt the increased sewer fees effective January 1, 2009, 2010, 2011, um, as proposed in the agenda, and that we approve an increase to the connection fee effective January 1, 2010, increasing that fee from $3,500 to $4,000. And second the motion. Okay. All in favor? 
Okay, you can show that to be unanimous, please. And the next item is a public, first uh, public hearing on uh, raising a number of miscellaneous fees, including um, electrical wiring, building permits, health permits, catering permits. Uh, there's a long list of um, what I guess I would characterize as generally minor fees um, that are listed. So um, this is a public hearing. And if anyone would like to speak to the fee increases, um, please do so. Seeing none, I will close the public hearing. And we will take up item 130, um, which is the increase in the fees. Um, I think it's pretty self-explanatory in your agenda. So unless the manager has something further to add. Just that, that there are one or two reductions as well. Yeah, oh, OK. Increases. That's good news. Your motion, Jim. I would I would move that we adopt the miscellaneous fee schedule uh, as proposed in item number 130-2008. Second. Second. Uh, further discussion. David. I'm going to support this, but I think it's worth noting that in our first two agenda items tonight, we are voting to increase fees, um, and it just heightens the awareness and the importance of always being mindful of ways to provide more efficient services and recognize the increased financial burden that we are expecting citizens in our town to bear all the time. Okay. All in favor? Take three and please show that to be unanimous. Next item is item 131, smoking at Fort Williams Park. This was a proposal that I um, suggested during the summer. We had a public hearing on it on September 8th. It would, prohibit, it would have prohibited smoking at Fort Williams. No one spoke at the public hearing in either opposition or in favor of it. Um, we then uh, referred the smoking piece at the request of the Fort Williams Advisory Commission to the Commission and they have unanimously recommended that the town deal with the issue under the current carry-in, carry-out litter policy and that therefore they do not recommend banning smoking. I um, was a little bit surprised at their recommendation and initially thought that I would propose tonight that we um, uh, consider banning smoking at the playground, the playing fields, and the lighthouse. Uh, I walk by the lighthouse every single day, and I maintain that it is um, uh, a habit that is commonly, people are commonly throwing their cigarette butts around our lighthouse and getting off the tour buses and smoking there. Um, but I don't want to rush something. Um, it is somewhat of a new, it's, uh, it is a subset of Fort Williams, but I'm mindful that some might think that it's a new proposal. So um, I guess I would just ask that, um, I don't want to ask that this be indefinitely postponed, um, but I would ask that the um, council perhaps consider a ban at some point in the future, or perhaps refer to the Fort Williams Advisory Commission, a ban on smoking in the playing fields, um, the lighthouse, and the beach. And these are all places that I think either children are, or we have many, many tourists around the lighthouse. That would be my last request of this council as a counselor. I'm sure it won't be my last request as a citizen, <laughs> however. Sarah? Does anyone, has anyone spoken to the advisory committee to get some insight into um, what, how they came up with this, what their feelings were? Because I was surprised, too. Yes. Michael, can you answer that? I spoke with Chuck Wilson, the chairman of the committee, and the, the views, I think, really centered around two issues. One is, is uh, a libertarian view that, you know, to the extent that government regulation, you know, should, should monitor private behavior, particularly in an outdoor setting. Uh, the second issue 
that the Fort Wayne's Advisory Commission had was primarily related to enforceability, and they have concern with how it would be enforced and uh, think that it would be very difficult to enforce. Can I ask one more question? Who cleans up the cigarette butts? Uh, there's no organized effort that I'm aware of to clean up cigarette butts. I'm sure that there are volunteers who occasionally do it, and I'm sure our staff, you know, picks it up. But for the most part, uh, you know, they uh, disintegrate over time. Jen. Um, I took your, your proposal to heart, Mary Ann. I gave it some good hard thought. Uh, I didn't support it as an ordinance change, but I, I would like to see some, uh, some signage down there uh, discouraging smoking, you know, particularly in the areas that you mentioned, the playground, uh, the ball field, uh, possibly the bus turnaround where they unload passengers, because that's, uh, you know, I'm, I'm more in favor of, of government trying to steer behavior than regulate it, and that's, that was my point. Uh, so I would, uh, I would uh, encourage our public works department to, uh, or, or the advisory commission, to look into some, some signage down there to, to discourage smoking, particularly in the areas that we mentioned. Can we do signage without an ordinance? Or? You know, if the, if the council doesn't, if I don't have any objection from the town council, I'll consider it your desire that I speak to Bob and the public works and the Fort Wayne's advisory commission about possibly placing some thank you for not smoking signs uh, in some of the areas that have been discussed. Paul? Uh, Marianne, um, my initial opposition to the idea was based on the fact that I thought it would be very difficult to enforce. And I, I think when you make rules and laws that you can't enforce or you don't intend to enforce, they tend to um, have little effect. But you know, having said that, I also did some research since our last discussion about this item. And I found that uh, there was a study that was uh, published in the Wall Street Journal uh, a few months ago regarding smoking bans. And what they found was that the communities that had banned smoking in public areas, you know, around schools and in parks and so forth, in various communities, had a much lower incidence of teen smoking. Mm -hmm. I, and I thought that was very interesting, the, the correlation between the ban and the, um, you know, the lower levels of teen smoking. And I thought that was a, a good um, piece of evidence to point to this, your idea being a good one. I still am concerned about um, enforceability, but I think maybe a first step would be to, you know, do the signage and let's see where it goes. I, I was in the park the other day, and I did notice that the smokers tend to throw the cigarette butts. And I was looking for them specifically because of our discussion. And I noticed that in certain areas near the fence, um, they definitely just drop them and uh, leave them. Because there were, there were quite a few in the grass over the fence and near the fence. And, you know, and that's, that's not good. That is not good, and that's certainly not in keeping with the carry in, carry out policy that we already have. So I think some additional signage on both counts might be helpful. Um, and then I think maybe we can revisit it at a future date. But, but I, the problem I have is the enforceability issue. And I, I think you can make all sorts of rules, but if you can't or are unwilling to enforce them, it doesn't do a whole lot of good. I think you're seeing a consensus well, for signage. Oh, no. I don't need to go on and on, but I supported the ban and I continue to support the ban and I, I'm going, not going to support the motion to just incorporate it into the carry and carry out. I think Fort Williams is a public resource that we have generously um, allowed people from all over the country and the world to come and enjoy what we have to offer and the Cape Elizabeth taxpayers support maintenance of the park and I don't see anything unreasonable or um, overly regulatory to simply have a rule that you can't smoke. I mean, we have a rule that you can't drink alcohol. Um, we have a rule that you can't smoke on the school grounds. I mean, my, my kids and everyone else's kids and grandkids um, play at the park, and I'm supportive of a ban on smoking at Fort Williams. So um, I appreciate your bringing up the issue, and I continue to support it, and I'm not going to support the... Um, Would you like to motion. make a motion? Well, there isn't a pending motion. Yeah.
No. Nope. So, would you like to make a motion? Um, well, I'd be happy to. I, I don't know that it's going to pass, but I'd be happy to make a motion. And the motion would be to um, um, adopt the, the language regarding smoking that was proposed uh, at the public hearing last month. Yes. Hmm. Thank you. That's my motion. Second. Okay. Further discussion? David. Now that we have a formal motion on the table, I will not support the motion. Um, um, for the sole reason that I am not inclined to overrule a unanimous recommendation of our Fort Williams Advisory Commission. Um, they are citizens who we have appointed to um, advise the council on policies related to Fort Williams. We've referred this matter to them. We've asked for their input. They've given us their input unanimously, and I think that their opinion on this should be respected. Um, and although I might disagree with it uh, personally, and I voiced my concerns on this last month, um, I will um, not support the motion for the sole purpose of supporting the recommendation of the Fort Williams Advisory Commission. May I, Cynthia. I have a question. Well, um, I certainly don't want my motion to be construed in any way as disrespectful to the Fort Williams Advisory Commission. We did have a public hearing that was properly noticed, and no one from the commission came forward and articulated any view one way or the other. And so um, while I certainly accept the memo as drafted by our public works uh, director uh, summarizing the Fort Williams Advisory Committee's work, um, I simply disagree with it, but I just wanted the record to be clear that it's out of no disrespect. It's just simply a, a disagreement about the merits of the policy. Sarah. <clears throat> I agree with Councillor Dell. I, I think it's incredibly generous of Cape Elizabeth to open the doors of Fort Williams. We chose not to charge a fee. It's, it's, and, and we're paying our tax money to clean it up. And I personally think that, that the carry and carry out completely breaks down with cigarettes. I've never seen somebody put their cigarette out and put it in their pocket or put it back on the bus to carry out. So in effect, we're choosing to not um, support another ordinance that's already in place, which is you have to carry your garbage out. And I think that cigarette butts are the most disgusting form of garbage. They're unhealthy. It's almost a health hazard. Little kids get it on their hands. There's dogs that, that eat them. I mean, I'd rather have a piece of garbage than a cigarette butt. And so if people could honor the carry in and carry out with cigarette butts, I'd be saying, fine, I don't care if they're puffing away. But they don't, and they never will. And therefore, I think it takes a next step to become more draconian, much as I don't like to legislate how people behave and much as I don't like to go against what the Fort Williams Advisory Commission has said because like everyone else I, I'd much rather defer to them but the fact is the ordinance we have in place is breaking down. I, I have no disrespect in fact I have a great deal of respect for the Fort Williams Advisory Commission and I um, think over my seven years I've probably um, supported every single recommendation they have made. Um, this is one time when I differ and I guess in the end and until Friday I feel that the uh, people of Cape Elizabeth ultimately have elected us to make these policy decisions and we we seek advice from citizens committees such as the Fort Williams Advisory Commission on many occasions on most occasions we will take their advice but um, I, I don't view it as disrespectful of them or their process to on occasion and in the, on a very rare occasion such as this to say this is one time when I disagree with the uh, Commission so um, I would I will support the motion I, I'm going to vote against the motion only because they've asked us to um, the Fort Williams Advisory Commission has asked us to uh, place additional signage in the problem areas, monitor the results. If it doesn't improve the situation, they'd like to look at other steps before looking at the need for the an ordinance provision. And, and I think that's a reasonable step in the right direction. So I'm inclined to support their request. Okay. Oh, 
Jim. Move the, move the question, please. Okay, I was about to move the question. So, all in favor? Would it be three opposed? Three, the motion fails. Okay, then I think we will go on to the next item and hopefully we'll have some thank you for not smoking signs. The next item is item 132. Um, bed and breakfast. Uh, the planning board has uh, reviewed and completed its review of a citizen initiated proposal to permit bed and breakfast um, facilities within Cape Elizabeth um, and uh, it is recommended here tonight that we refer this to the ordinance committee. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Discussion? I just wanted to quickly mention that Town Council did receive about 100 emails uh, that were received from citizens on this issue, and I commend you to read those uh, yes. during your leisure time. They were in our package. We won't be providing them again just this, this one time. Okay. Thank you. Um, uh, the Town Council, the Planning Board received? The Planning Board received all those and they're in your emails, package. letters, correspondence. So further discussion? None? All in favor of referring this to the Ordinance Committee? And that would be unanimous. Thank you. The next item is item 133, uh, the Town Center intersection. And it, it is proposed to schedule a public hearing on the Town Center intersection traffic light on Monday, November 10th. Um, and I know there are people here in the audience. Um, we are, I anticipate that in the next few minutes we will schedule this for a public hearing, but if anyone would like to speak very briefly on the matter, they're welcome to do so. Okay. Then, um, may I have a, I'm sorry. Uh, excuse me, please come up to the microphone and identify yourself for the public. We know who you are. Five Shore Road in Cape. Uh, we would, those of us who are here about this issue would just strongly urge you to uh, have this additional hearing. Um, as with smoking at um, Fort Williams, I never heard there was a public hearing on that, and I would have been right here to support it. Um, it, it's very hard to keep up with what's coming up and the descriptions that we get are so meager that I think a lot of people say, oh, well, I don't know what that's about really, so they're not, they don't show up. Um, and I think that we're getting, generating more and more interest on this big project, um, so we really hope that you'll allow the citizens to have another opportunity to talk about it. Thanks. Okay, thank you. Okay, is there a motion? Jim? I would move that we uh, refer item number 133-2008 to a public hearing on November 10th. Second. 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 Uh, further discussion? All in favor? That would be unanimous. Thank you. Okay, item 134 is a special election to um, fill the vacancy for um, my seat. That would be the term extending to December um, 2010. And uh, it's proposed that um, nomination papers become available Monday, October 20th. They are due uh, December 1st. Absentee ballots would become available December 29th and a special election to fill the vacant town council seat would be held on January 27th. Michael? Yeah, I just wanted to add to this. Uh, I spoke late this afternoon with Jim Gailey, the city manager of South Portland. Uh, we also have a, a uh, vacancy on the trustees of the Portland Water District due to the untimely passing of Peter Lawson. Uh, the Portland Water District seat is a representative of both South Portland and Cape Elizabeth. So it's important that it be coordinated an election the same day. Uh, the recommendation that will be going to the South Portland City Council is they also schedule the special election for the Water District on January 27th. So uh, if anyone is interested in serving as, in, as a trustee of the Portland Water District uh, and lives in either South Portland or Cape Elizabeth, uh, they, they should be aware and keep their ears open and eyes open uh, for the availability of nomination petitions for that seat. I'd also like to mention because 
the Portland Water District trustees, there's, there's a provision in the law, they will actually pay for half of the cost of the special election uh, because half of the races on the ballot will be, will be water districts. So that's a, another advantage of, uh, uh, of joining in with the water district trustee election. Good. Is there a motion? David? I move that we schedule a special election for January 27, 2009 to fill the vacancy on the town council created by the resignation of Chairman Lynch. And a second. Second. All in favor? That would be unanimous. If I might, the, the minutes will also reflect that you approve the signing of the warrant uh, for that election. Which will, yes. Yeah. Okay. And um, now the next item is item 135, and that would be an election of a new town council chairman. And uh, this would be for a short term from uh, Saturday, October 18th, to December 8th, at which point the new council um, would then elect, um, and perhaps the same person, but um, there would be an election with after. There will be an election of the new chairman after the new council is elected. Did they make that clear? Mm -hmm. And I, um, I, I will not vote on this, um, so since I won't be here to serve under the new chair. David? I would like to uh, move that we, uh, well, I move the election of Councillor Rowe to fill the vacancy created in the chairmanship. Uh, Council Rowe has done a great job as our finance chair. Um, he has certainly demonstrated his ability to lead the council through thick and thin. And um, I'll leave the motion at that. Second. Thank you, David. I will second the motion. OK, discussion. David called me and asked me if I'd be interested in this, and I tried to fumble around and find William Tecumseh Sherman's uh, famous remarks of nominee, but I timed out and lost my opportunity to decline at that point. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I had said I wouldn't vote on it, but I suspect it may be unanimous, and I would like to have the pleasure of voting for you because it has been um, a pleasure um, watching you as finance chair. So there's no further discussion. We'll... All in favor? And that would be unanimous. And I have a present. I have a present for you. <laughs> <laughs> At one of our budget meetings, I borrowed my son's Vogel sand timer. Well, what, what was quickly apparent was if someone only spoke for a minute, that timer really didn't work because the sand was still flowing down, but it helped. It gave the public, I think, a sense of time passing nonetheless. So I kept flipping it, but it bore no relevance to the three minutes. After that meeting, I went out and I bought a real egg timer <laughs> so that we wouldn't be shortchanging the public. And I want to pass the timer on to the next chair. Sweet. <laughs> <laughs> Your time's up, Marianne. <laughs> My time is up, but better that you not use it on the Chief Justice. It is a, um, it is a way. The only way when we have long hearings, as all of you know, um, in, in which we can allow 50 or 60 people to speak in a night is to have some sense of time. So, there you go. You're ready for the Thank job. Thank you very much. <laughs> you might need it in Augusta. <laughs> yeah. She will need. <laughs> <laughs> but I won't be in a position to time anybody in Augusta. I need one. Right? <laughs> okay. Um, the next item is a congratulations. Thank you for your confidence. Okay. Hopefully I'll be able to deliver. So. I'm sure you will. But uh, like uh, Jason Bay, who was the new member of the Red Sox that had to fill in for Manny Ramirez this year, I'll use his, you know, I'm not Manny Ramirez and I'm, I'm not going to try to be. I'm, I'm uh, Jason Bay. I feel the same way. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not Mary Ann Lynch. I'm not going to try to be Mary Ann Lynch. I'm just going to be Jim Rowe and I hope you can accept me for that. So. <laughs> I think people will be relieved. <laughs> so, okay. Item 136 is the annual approval of the general assistance appendices and these appendices were in our mailbox. 
at some point. I, I did see mine, so. Um, is there a motion? And this would be a motion to schedule a public hearing on November 10th. So moved. Second. Discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? This would be unanimous. And last but not least, um, the town manager on item 137 is appointing, subject to the approval of this council, Deborah Lane as town clerk. We're very fortunate. Deborah served as town clerk for uh, a few years, um, from 1986 to 2003, and uh, it's great that she's ready and willing, particularly with an election right around the corner, to um, take that on again. So we thank you, um, but we need to confirm the manager's appointment. So, Jim. I wholeheartedly uh, move that we uh, nominate, uh, or that we elect or, or appoint uh, Deb Lane as, as a Cape Elizabeth Town Clerk, and also as Registrar of Voters. A second motion. All in favor? Six zero, unanimous. Thank, Thank you, you, Deborah. Thank you. Welcome back. Welcome back, <laughs> yes. And uh, it's that time in the meeting for a citizen um, discussion of items not on the agenda. If there is anyone here who would like to speak to any item not on our agenda, now is an opportunity. Okay, if you would like to speak, please come up to the podium and state your name and where you live. And You all uh, had referred to a, a different board member, but good afternoon, good evening to all of you. My name is Sean Tamir, 1 Crescent View Avenue in Cape Elizabeth. Um, in uh, not just favor, but in support of the bed and breakfast amendment. And I know that there was some sort of procedural um, actions in turning this discussion to a different board members. Or I, and I'm not really sure how, the, how you structure and who is really um, who are the people that would be comprised of the board members that would discuss this? But if you would give me an opportunity, a few minutes to speak about it, I'd be grateful. So I'd leave it up to you at the moment. Okay. I, I, I would just explain that before the council considers any um, changes to our ordinance, it goes all proposed ordinance changes go to our ordinance committee, and then it will come back to the full council, um, at which point they would hold a public hearing and have public discussion, but you're certainly welcome to say something tonight if you wish, or you could wait until it comes back. Sometimes it comes back in the same form, sometimes it comes back in a different form, sure. sometimes it has a different recommendation. But three of us here are on the ordinance committee. So maybe I should take uh, the And the ordinance committee meetings are open to the public. That, that's fantastic. Uh, so with, with your permission, um, um, I've, I've lived in Cape Elizabeth for about a year and a half plus. Uh, I've acquired a property that actually few of them, few of you might be uh, familiar with intimately. It's one Crescent View Avenue. Um, it's right on the corner of uh, Kettle Clove Road and uh, Route 77. Uh, it used to be, when I purchased it, it was a very rugged and really run down piece of property that stretches on a 1.5 acres of land. And uh, for whatever reason, the previous owners did not really care for it. Um, there were plentiful incidents of police getting involved with the occupants of what it is today as a three unit. Beautiful Victorian, it was built in 1818. Absolutely a, a phenomenal uh, landmark um, with great history behind it. It used to be the, the farmhouse of what is now two subdivisions. And it stretched all the way to the ocean. And when I was told about it by, by a good friend of mine, um, I, w I was really attracted to the whole history behind it and what would be the opportunity to uplift it and do something extraordinary with it. And Cape Elizabeth, uh, out of all places I know, and I'm, I'm from California, um, does not have a bed and breakfast. And we are thinking, what can we do to really enhance, first of all, to take this incredible structure and transform it and bring it back instead of just tearing it down and then do something that, that is really needed and would be well welcomed by, by the residents of the town. 
Uh, my wife and I, and uh, now a year old daughter and two dogs, uh, have since moved to the house and we have done extensive renovations and if, if any of you remember and I, I would love to bring some pictures because before and after it gives people an incredible opportunity to see what is it that people you know the transformation it used to be covered with trees we used to have hundreds of feet of, of, um, of fencing that was just run down and, and quite rusty and ugly there were dogs running around the property with you know remains everywhere um, and we cleaned up the property tremendously and we really built it to 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 the point not where we were really happy but that's kind of halfway or midway through what we really see the, the property transforming to and um, I came forward and, and made a proposal uh, uh, to the town to allow bed and breakfast in, in a town such as ours which we don't have and in addition to it <clears throat> or Moreover, what we really wanted to see is what kind of a feedback we get from the residents of the town. And we went and petitioned, lightly said, um, signatures from people, but more so opinions of people from, from around town, of what they think and how would they perceive a really nice, upscale, well done uh, bed and breakfast that would really serve the majority of our residents here in town, that since we don't have too many options, and I think the only one we've got is uh, so down the street from us is, is the only hotel that we've got, which is, uh, um, um, help me, yeah. and by the sea, thank you. Um, and we've, we've had a tremendous support uh, in favor of seeing a really nice, well done, upscale, and reasonably priced uh, bed and breakfast in town. Uh, and when I had my first opportunity to speak <clears throat> in front of the, the board, um, I was immediately shut down. I, I, you were so kind to me tonight that I'm, I'm really, really impressed and, th and thankful. But I, they didn't even give me three minutes and they immediately said, Whoosh. and that was open to the public. And um, I waited you know, kindly and patiently until the next meeting. And that was my second opportunity. And, and as soon as I walked over here, they already cut me and I said, no, no, it's the end of the night. We're really, really tired. We're not going to talk about it. And, uh, and, and I did lose hope, and I, I kept on reaching out and saying, hey, listen, I want to be a part of, of this town in the best manner that we know how to be. Um, I, I don't want to be the excluder, I want to be the includer, and I want to do something that would really make a difference in this town. Uh, and we've got s tremendous amount of support for what we've done with the structure already. Um, and we got to the point where, you know, I was attending every, every possible meeting that was close to the public or open to the public to see if there's any way that I, I could be heard. That the idea of just listening to me would be, would be entertained. Um, and, and unfortunately it wasn't so and you know lastly I think everybody you know, on the board felt kind of sort of guilty and they let me speak and during the last, uh, uh, the last open public, open to the public meeting hearing which was in September, I think it was September, September 16th. Uh, where I was given five minutes to talk about it and, um, and, and I basically uh, supported the amendment which, which is to say um, up to 14 rooms which right now the property has 15 rooms as is so we're not proposing to build anything we're not proposing to do any new construction on the contrary we want to do we want to do with what we have um, we have one point almost 1.5 acres of land which would support plenty of beautiful grounds, plenty of, of beautiful landscape and parking for every single guest plus a keeper for us. Um, we even went as far as to say if any of, and I, and I went to my neighbors and I said before I even did this, I said please let me know what is it that you think that I could be doing that would actually bring you on board with this idea that you will see the merit and then you'll see the light in having this done for the town and um, uh, for the most part most of my neighbors supported it with the exception of two that kind of flip-flopped on the issue um, um, and I even said that you know if there is any issue with traffic which I mean Kettle Cove and 77 draws enough traffic as it is and I think up to and you probably would probably know the number of cars that travel through through that kind of corner going down to Kettle Cove Beach more than me but we actually requested um, a bunch of information to, to kind of look at statistics of how many cars in the summertime are passing through that and then quite a lot. 
Um, and the idea was that, okay, who stays in bed breakfast? You know, it's usually upscale people, people that want to get up early in the morning, take walks on the beach, people that tuck in around 8.30, 9 o'clock at 9 after a really good dinner at the good table or anywhere in Portland. And it's a nice, quiet, upscale, well-to-do place. And everybody was in favor of that. Um, and I'm not going to take much more of your time. I just want to make my point that um, at the end of the last public hearing, I realized what, what something that I knew from, from the get-go, but I, I kind of was kind of naive about it. The two of the members on the board were my neighbors. One was living on Crescent View Avenue, and one was living on Kettle Cove Road. Literally five houses on one hand and five houses on the other. And there was great opposition from, from two of them. Um, and, and I felt that um, I, I, I didn't want to. I didn't want to become the, this this problem child. Quite frankly, I didn't want to be, you know, the one that you know, screaming and yelling. Hey, you know, how how can I get possibly get a fair hearing here if two of the board members here are on the same road that I'm on and they're not willing to even listen to it? How can I possibly expect, you know, the board members to, to even listen to and entertain it? And one of them in particular had um, had made. A whole, and I'm not here to accuse anybody. I just, I just, this is this is something that it kind of dawned on me in the last meeting, that I'm thinking that you know, if if I'm not going to turn to somebody who's be willing to listen and entertain something that is really in the favor of everybody in this town, uh, what would I possibly do? Should should I just walk away and say, okay, this is this is something that will never be entertained because of some some bad opposition? And, um, and I went and talked to my neighbors a little bit, and, and they said, well, you know, you know, one of the council members, uh, oh, I'm sorry, one of the, the, the planning board members have been soliciting opinions from, from my own neighbors. And I said, how can it be? I mean, how unethical of somebody, you know, and the board members to actually do so? And they say, yeah, you better look into it. And I said, you know, I'm not going to go there. All I want is for, at this time, the council members to look at something, to look at its merit, to look at a, at a property that is about 75 feet from the main road, which right now it's the way it's proposed and the way it's worded is only properties that would be on Shore Road or on 77 would be with a frontage of 125 feet on the main road would be permitted to open up to nine rooms of bed and breakfast. Um, if, if any of you do recall uh, where the property is, I'm already adjacent to a commercial property. I'm right across the street from the from the dairy ice cream shop owned by one of my good friends and neighbors and literally 75 feet from from 77 from Ocean Ocean House Road and uh, the house actually is facing 77 and it is really unique in every sense and if you ever travel if you look at a map of, of Cape Elizabeth and you say you know if we will entertain this Sean if we'll say okay we're willing to Amend, um, amend this and say, okay, up to 100 feet away from the main road, how many properties and property owners around Cape Elizabeth would jump on that wagon and say, I want to get my house on that bed and breakfast wagon? I mean, what is it that they possibly have that could match up to 1.5 acres of land, three units? We have 16 rooms as it is. We have we are right there by Kettle, we are right tucked away by between Kettle Cove and Crescent Beach. It's just the most ideal and the most beautiful structure to entertain and to really do something elaborate and to allow people to stay at a, at a rate of under two hundred dollars a night versus five hundred dollars a night down the street, which would really open up an opportunity for us as as residents to have friends and family over even around Christmas time. So this is just the beginning of the process. And so I think you've given us a good explanation. Um, I would encourage you, the Ordinance Committee um, has uh, their meetings are open to the public. Um, and then the council uh, will consider whatever they send to us. And at that point, there'll be a full public hearing. And um, you know, it's a little premature to get into the details. Um, I do want to caution you about um, aspersions on um, people's integrity because it is a small town sure. and when you look around we all live around the block or down the street from something that comes before us and and I That's do so believe true. that um, we all and and I include when I say we the planning board as well try to approach <clears throat> all of these things fairly so I would encourage you to stay involved in the process um, 
but it's it's really sort of you're still in chapter one here so well thank you for listening thank you for the opportunity to speak in front of you tonight and um i hope to see you soon again thank you. have a good night the, the building looks great oh thank you okay is there anyone else yeah I, I, sorry. I just wanted to provide a little bit of fill around item number 137 uh, a couple of things first Ruth Noble has resigned as town clerk uh, and you know, I know you all joined me in wishing her well and the other point I wanted to make is is you know this isn't clear that Deborah is continuing as the assistant town manager uh, the, the, this is an additional responsibility that she's taking on as town clerk and it's part of an office reorganization that's actually projected to save about $17,000. Uh, and, you know, it, it's, I feel bad that some people left who are always looking at us to save ways of money because I think, you know, this is a perfect example of, you know, what the town does all the time in, in looking of, looking of ways of, of uh, saving some funds. And when we, when we have an opportunity to, to look at, you know, different structures, different, different ways, uh, we do that, and uh, in this case, you know, we will be saving quite a bit. And I, re I really do appreciate Deborah willing to take on this additional responsibility, as well as Jackie Coy, who uh, remains as the deputy town clerk, who will also be working very closely with Deborah, and uh, will be actually physically relocated to just outside my office, uh, her desk, and then her position across the hall or a position across the hall. Uh, we'll, we're reducing by eight hours, and we're, we're also, as a result of all the shifts, hiring at a lower salary than we had been. So I, I just wanted to explain that, put it into some context, and uh, indicate uh, that I'm really appreciative of Deborah. And uh, we, we, we very much hear concerns about spending and about looking for efficiency in government, and this is an example of doing it. And I think too often these things move too quickly. And we don't point that out, and all we hear is the criticism uh, of, of our actions and of the fact that we don't look for savings. And, you know, this, uh, I, I quite frankly uh, think it's, it's good to indicate something positive when uh, something positive is happening. So thank you. Thank you, Michael. And we do appreciate uh, the effort to look for savings and to actually find some savings. It will be a very difficult budget year ahead. Uh, just an announcement, uh, we have a town council workshop tomorrow, October 16th, where we will be reviewing the annual audit, um, revised council rules. Council goals. Council goals, and uh, is there anything else? Uh, the right to know law. That's right. Oh, uh, and I would also announce that all local officials, uh, town council and school board members, um, a number of other people, I think like the town clerk, are required now under a new state law to have training in the Freedom of um, Access Act. And uh, we are going to provide that training tomorrow night um, at 7.30 so that you can all be certified that you've had that training. And the, the one other item on the agenda is we look, we'll be looking at the budget as, as of the end of the first quarter. Thank you. And I just wanted to also add the school budget and other local officials are welcome. We'll do the training first so that if there's anyone else who um, needs the training, they should feel free to come. Um, the next uh, town council regular meeting is on November 10th. Um, the next town council workshop is on November 20th. And then the uh, town council meeting with the new town council after the election will be December 8th. So um, again, thank you all. It's been a pleasure to work with you. and. Uh, I'll see most of you tomorrow night, I guess. Good night. Oh, we need a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor?